G'day Jaffa Adventures, Terry King here. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode in the FJ45 build series. Today, I'm gonna rebuild this manual steering box. It's leaking like a sieve and it's just generally pretty crusty. So I'm gonna pull the sucker apart and see what makes it tick inside and put it back together with some new bits. Oh, and by the way, I've actually never pulled one of these apart before, so I really don't know what I'm in for. It's gonna be a bit of an experiment as we go. Let's do it. First thing I'm gonna do is pull this rag joint off. Hopefully you can get these things as a replacement part because this one is pretty crusty and that leather or rubber, whatever it is in the rag joint itself, is just about perished away. That's pretty crusted on. I think we'll need a gear puller to pull that off. Well, my gear puller idea isn't going to work. I've only got a three jaw puller and it just locks onto this squishy rubber bit. So that's not gonna work very well to pull it out. So I think what I'm gonna try to do next is to pound something in here and open that up and maybe that'll loosen it on the splines. Okay, I've got a tire lever with a tapered end on it. So let me pop that in there and see if that'll drive this open a little bit. That didn't work. Method number three, get a pin punch. See if we can drive it off this way. She's moving. Got it. Moral of the story, when all else fails, beat the crap out of it. Now, before I get too much further, I think I'll grab some Carby cleaner and just clean this thing up, pop it in the blast cabinet and get it fully clean before I start to disassemble it. There we go, she's out of the blast cabinet. And looking bloody good. All right, I think I'm going to take that off next to drain the oil. Because if I start pulling these covers off, I mean, oil's going to go everywhere. That is toxic looking oil. Got two covers, side cover and a top cover. Don't know which one to do first. I think I'll go with this top cover. Now, I really hope there's no springs in there that come shooting out and fly across the room on me. She's separated. I'm trying not to bugger up that gasket in there because I can't find aftermarket gaskets, so I'm going to have to make myself one. And I'd like a template, if at all possible. shim. You know, it doesn't actually look like it's got a gasket. No, it's actually all shims. So a small shim that says 0 .060 on the body, and then the next shim, which says 0 .2, a final shim that says 0 .5 on the lid, and no gaskets anywhere to be seen. I think they're actually relying on this part, which sits inside of the housing, to do the ceiling for you. That's cool, so I don't need a gasket for there. Maybe that's why a gasket's not available. Okay, we've got a bunch of ball bearings in a race, and I reckon if I pull that race out of there, those ball bearings will fall out. Nope, they're captive. They're captive in the race. Good job, Toyota. Okay, I think I'll pull this cover off now. See what we've got on the other side. That must be an adjuster of some description. It's coming. I just think it's crustiness holding it on. I'm committed now. Okay, it's a funky looking bit of cold Medina. Got her. And that's what she looks like. Now that's definitely a gasket I'm going to need to make up. And there's one more bearing in the bottom there. Another ball bearing that that shaft sits in. There she be. All right, 
side, I don't think there's any other bits and pieces in there that need to come out. Okie doke. That mating surface is all cleaned up. We'll do the corresponding one on the steering box now. Alrighty, that's that one. And I'll do this one here where the shims were located as well. Just going to get my pin punch and mark those two surfaces. Alright, now I know the orientation of that little bugger. Okay, there's two seals in this steering box and I'm going to replace both of those. And I'll start with this one here. There she goes. I'm going to give that surface the ever slightest clean up with this little flapper wheel. There, that looks great. So the replacement seal is part number 9031118010. And it looks like that, just a tiny little seal. I'll pop a little bit of Loctite on it. Not a lot, just a thin little smearing. She be home. Refurb number one. The other seal I'm gonna replace is this one in the end of the box itself. This one is completely buggered. <laughs> Look at that. In the bin. Because this one has been leaking so much, the surface that the seal sits in is in excellent condition. I'm just going to pop this shaft in here. See how much slop is in that bush. Very little. Good. There's a brass bush in there and I was just worried that that bush might have been a little bit flogged out. But it is in pretty good nick. So our second seal is part number 90311-32014. And that's that sucker which sits in there like so. I'll do the same thing. Put a little bit of Loctite on it and a wee bit inside of the bore. Didn't take very much force at all to tap that in. All right, that's it. Seals are all refurbished. There's only two of them. Now I've got to make a gasket up for that. The I couldn't find one in any Toyota parts catalog. So I've got myself some gasket material and I'll show you how I make gaskets up ourselves out a chunk of gasket material. Now nor if you can trace the pattern out, great. On this particular one you can't just because of the shape of the box. So the way that I do a trace in that case is I get myself a ball peen hammer and just tap it around the edge. Also tap where the bolt holes are. And that's what you're left with, a pattern like that. So I'll go ahead and cut this out next. There's our shape. I'll just pop that back on. And now I'll do the exact same thing on the internal surface. And there we have it. There's the shape of our internal surface. And there's our gasket cut out. So now we just got to punch these four bolt holes out. There we have it. One gasket. Let's check it for fitment. Beautiful. Bolt holes all line up perfectly. Good to go. Okay, time to put this sucker together and I'm just going to use a little bit of gear oil for assembly. I'm not sure actually what weight oil goes in the box itself. I'll have to do a bit of research on that, but I'll assemble it with the gear oil. And I think that this piece here and this drive here have to kind of go in together, which means we've got to put our gasket material here and we've got to lube up that seal on the other side as well as all the shafts that will be going in for the assembly. The reason I'm rebuilding this box was because it was leaking and I suspect that it was this gasket that was leaking. Of course the seals weren't very much chop either which you saw. So that's that face and we'll do this face as well. Now I'll put a bit of lubricant on this shaft because that's going to run inside of that brass bush and I'll put a little bit of lube on that brass bush and on that seal. Okay, that's got that side of things. Now I've got to put a bit of lube down in there and drop the bearing in there. And get our bearing and drop him inside. Pop inside like 
that. And that is going to engage with the teeth on this. I think I've got it. You do need to clock it right. That one gear on this shaft here needs to be just about in the center of that other steering gear. It might actually be one tooth out. Just looking at it. I think that's it. I think we got her. Okay, let me run those bolts in there. Okay, I've done my research and found out that this thing holds about 500 mil of 90 weight. And that's what I've got here. So, I'm going to top it up before I put the lid on her. And there we have it, 500 mil. Alrighty, let's put the cap on this sucker. Okay, this side's got the three shims, and the cap sits down inside that recess and almost seals it. So I'm going to put a little bit of goo on here, and I'm going to put a little bit of goo in between each one of those shims. Okay, that is oriented like this with my two marks, which means these shims sit down like that. Next we'll pop in our bleeder, which is this little sucker. I think I'll actually put some thread tape on that. Alright, the last thing to do is to adjust this backlash. My understanding is there should be no backlash in these particular gears. Probably one of the only gears that do have no backlash. Okay, one steering box rebuilt. I'll hit that with a little bit more degreaser and we'll paint him. Final stage. Give this a coating or two of pour 15. I don't know whether you saw my video on the steering idler box, which I also used this pour 15. But if you haven't, go check it out because I do talk about this stuff a little bit. I rate it. I rate it very, very highly. Don't get this stuff on your hands, because the only thing that'll take it off is time. All right, 415 is all dry. Steering box mounted onto its mounting spot. Just got to run our bolts down. Here we have it, folks. Steering box rebuilt and remounted ready for the steering arms to go back onto it. I hope you found something useful in this video. I know I did. It was the first time I pulled apart a manual steering box before, so that was pretty cool to have a look inside. Thanks for following along, everybody. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Keep the shiny side up. We'll see you on the next build video. Bye now.